Hey everybody, Jason here from CNC Labs with a new video today. Today we're talking about, it's not the machine, it's you. I'm going to walk you through some of the most easiest to you, a little bit more complicated ways that you can solve your own problems that were not entirely caused by you, but definitely it's your fault. What? Uh, this is not the size I want. What you saw there was an issue that is very common and it's often when the wrong post processor uh, has been selected when you exported your toolpath. You can see in here is the scaling issue. A scaling issue always indicates the wrong post processor and typically that's going to be uh, a g-code file but the file extension is going to be like a tap file often it's coming from vetric products uh, we see a lot of so anytime you export your file make sure that the post processor has gerbil and your file extension has my amazing project dot g-code uh, G code or a dot nc file is what we look for. A dot tap file is almost always going to give you a scaling issue, uh, especially if you export as uh, a G code inch post processor. My material is set to nine by nine, but my design is three eighths of an inch. Definitely an issue with the post processor. Can't wait to do my most amazing project. No, what, what the heck? So the reason for why this issue was happening was because I had zeroed my Z axis to the top of the work material. In my CAM program, I had it selected to the bottom of the material. So what it's doing is it's moving up my material thickness and then coming back down into car where it thinks the material is. But since I've changed the position, it's now carving above my material and then coming back and down. One way to take a peek to see which way you should be carving, all of my tool paths are resting up upon above the plane where I would expect to see all of this detail below the plane. Another quick way to check to make sure that you are gonna set your Z height to the right location, click the front little box there and then check where your detail, where your tool paths are. As soon as you see that, you know exactly that you've either made a mistake or you're good to go. All right, one of the very common issues that we get typically is because you're, say you're doing your machine or you've updated G-Sender and now you're starting a project but the machine's moving erratically or you take a look in your firmware and the settings look strange. They're, saying, they're not saying what you're expecting to say, they're all in yellow. Typically what that is, is because when you've connected to your machine, you've selected Gerbil and not Gerbil Hal. Uh, often people will try to flat, like restore their firmware defaults while they're using Gerbil. The machine isn't moving the exact same way it was before. So always check, and you'll see it underneath the COM port, whether it's Gerbil or Gerbil Hal. Gerbil if you've got the long board, Gerbil Hal if you're using any of our SLB boards. Connect, select Gerbil Hal, connect to your COM port, and then go into your firmware, restore firmware settings, let it do its thing. Error 53 pops up, don't worry, you're okay. It's just uh, there's settings hidden behind other settings and that's just an error that pops up but everything should be okay. Go back. Now that you've restored all your settings, you should be back to normal and you're ready to rock and roll again. But once again, just take a quick peek at what things you need to take a look at. The issue that we had encountered on this is that I've got the auto zero touch plate, but unfortunately I've got the standard touch block chosen. And so, it zeroed fine, but when it moved to the side and plunged down, 
it's because it was expecting to go on the outside of the box, of the block, not, of the, not on the inside like the Auto Zero Touch Plate has. As always, before you do your job, check to make sure that everything is set up the way that you want to and double check. It can revert back sometimes if it restored your default settings or uh, sometimes an update will revert your settings back to the standard touch plate. Very common issue, just always check. All right, now that you've got an understanding of what has happened that's not machine related, let me walk you through a very simple pre-flight checklist that we'll have down below. But for your sake here, let's go through the things we just talked about. First off, every time you connect, take a peek up here, make sure it says Gerbil Hal, or Gerbil, depending on your controller, underneath the, your communications port. Always double check probing if you're a big fan of using the touch plates, I know a lot of you guys are. And gals, I know you are. So just double check that your touch plate is, is the correct one. There's lots of visuals to indicate, always double check that. When you import or load your file, check the scaling based off of it. You know, use the, the values here. These are, currently this is set to inches, but obviously a lot, of everyone, a lot of people use millimeters. Just double check that your scaling is correct. Give it a quick peek to the front tab, if I can ever get this to work. There we are. And double check that your Z height is expected where it's supposed to be. Once again, if your tool path is above the, the plane, the X plane, you're going to want to zero to the material surface. And that's really it. Hope you enjoyed this video and I hope everyone has learned a little something about their machine today. All right, we'll see you in the next one. All right, now that you understand that it's your fault and not the machine's fault, and while I love to hear from you, I don't need to hear about this. <laughs> Can't say that. <laughs> we can use that as a blooper reel. <laughs>